In this video, I'm going to show you how to get super smooth slow motion in Premiere Pro without having to record in really high frame rate. All right, so in order to get the slowest, smoothest slow-mo you can get, you have to access something called time interpolation, regardless of the method you used to make your clip slow-mo in the first place. So whether you right-clicked on your clip and went up to speed duration and slow-moed your clip this way, or you hit R and use the rate stretch tool to stretch out and slow-mo your clip that way, or you use speed ramping or time remapping like this one by right clicking on this little effects thing, going to time remapping and selecting speed, there's two ways to access time interpolation. You can right click on your clip and go to time interpolation right here and you'll see the three options, or you can right click, go to speed slash duration and then access time interpolation right here and it'll be the same three options. Just know however, that time interpolation only comes into effect when you make your footage slower than the optimum slow motion rate. Because when you slow a clip too much, you essentially stretch it out beyond the frames you have available. For example, slowing a 30 frames per second clip down to 50% speed. This creates gaps between the original frames, meaning Premiere now has to figure out how to fill in the spaces where there are frames that are missing. Unlike a clip that was filmed with a higher frame rate that even when stretched out, still has enough frames to fill in each spot of the chosen time base. But just know that Premiere has three different options for applying time interpolation, starting with the default setting, which is frame sampling. This is where Premiere duplicates existing frames in order to fill in the gap, which typically results in jittery or choppy footage. The second option is frame blending, where now Premiere adds a crossfade between the frames to fill in the gap, which generally causes a ghosting effect. Last but not least, there's optical flow. This is where Premiere uses the information and details in the surrounding frames in order to predict or artificially create new frames. The problem is this can often produce unwanted digital artifacts. The main thing to note here is that optical flow will struggle with fast moving subjects, very detailed backgrounds, and or low contrast images. So in order to get the most out of the effect, make sure to film in higher resolutions like 4K with an overcrank shutter speed like 1 over 250 and especially with faster frame rates like 60 frames per second or faster. Just know that if you select frame blending or optical flow, when you go to preview your clip, it's going to look the same as frame sampling. It's going to look all jittery. That's because you have to render it first. So just click on your clip, go up to sequence, down to render selection, then once it's done rendering, you'll be able to preview it properly. To learn about other ways to change the speed of a clip in Premiere Pro, make sure to watch the videos linked on the screen right now or down in the description below.